Blog Talk Radio. Uh... When you find yourself falling into darkness, realize that darkness is not evil, the lack of light is not bad, it's just different from what you're used to experiencing. When you find yourself in a dark night of the soul, realize that there is always a balance between light and darkness. And because we live in the daytime so much of our lives, sometimes, for a certain amount of time within the Kundalini context, we must experience the darkness where the sacred feminine nurtures the seed. Hello everyone, this is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. And uh, first of all, though, I would like to welcome my cohort in this conscious exploration. Uh, I would like to welcome Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism. Good night from this part of the world. Um, <laughs> Good afternoon from this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just um, communicating with Joe on the on the forum that she's in New Zealand, and it's Thursday morning in that part of the world and in India. And um, so it's amazing that we're all here tuning in and listening to this at the same time. It's a real gift, isn't it, this technology? Yeah, blessings to the technology for sure. And it, yes. it, did, w- w- is Joe able to join us right now? I'm not sure. She's certainly trying, but I know we have people listening okay. in in other areas in that part of the world as well. I Absolutely. have a question for you from her for later. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, in this conversation, I would like to discuss with everyone, um, and if we can go ahead and get rid of that echo there. Yeah, yeah. I would like to discuss with with uh, everybody uh, the halo or the corona that surrounds the the person's head. As uh, Amelia sh- uh, was demonstrating by posting a picture on the Kundalini Awakening exclamation point website, uh, the thousand petaled lotus emits quite a bit of energy. But first, I believe. There are some announcements to be had, and I'm going to go ahead and put Amelia into the Shakti zone. Here she is. <laughs> uh, well, from the Shakti zone, I would like to just welcome everybody again, and we have a lot of people listening in the chat room. So please, if the sound quality goes down or anything like that happens, please type in and let us know. So welcome everybody there. Um, I'll begin as usual by telling you where you can go if you wish to make a donation to support the work that um, is done on Kundalini Awakening Systems. And as you know, this is part of where the Kundalini teachings are given. This is one platform and there are many, many others which PRISM will give you um, the locations of later on Facebook and, and various places. So if you are able to support this work, and if you want to do so, I'll give you the address. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you will find that Donate button, which is really very easy to use once you begin the process. And as I always say, there's no pressure on anybody to, um, to donate um, it is just if you wish to and if you are in a position to do so. And MJ is asking, is there sound? Now, that's scary. <laughs> yes. uh, can anybody else uh, write into the chat group if, uh, if you're hearing this? Okay. So. Yes. Yes, there is, Fashti. <laughs> Thank you, Fashti. Fashti, I'd like to have a conversation with you after the program, if that works for you. <sighs> okay, all right. DRB, all right. Um, thank you. Thank you for those announcements, Amelia. Uh, okay, I would like to. 
uh, into the Shiva zone. <laughs> Shiva being blue and Shakti being red. We get these little red, red and blue buttons here at Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio is typically, I would say, 65% of the time, a, a very, very good uh, modality to use for for broadcasting to large groups of people. However, it does have its bugs, and so if my voice is distorting, or if, you know, if you know, if something is not going well with the broadcast, please call in and uh, and let us know, and we will fix it ASAP. This conversation, once again, well, let me let me. If you would like more of this information, go to the. Uh, the Facebook groups, which are Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, and another group, which is Kundalini Awakening Systems 2. Uh, there are other various groups, uh, the Kundalini Radiance Community, which is also there, but uh, that's more about setting up a, an intentional community where Kundalini people could live side by side with each other and, and uh, really, you know, really develop a community of kundalini people, something that is a forerunner of what I am seeing that this planet will have in the future. Whether that future is distant or near is really up to up to the kundalini. Uh, so you can reach those groups on Facebook, on the Yahoo Network. You can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, at yahoogroups.com. Uh, you can also go to Kundalini Healing at yahoogroups.com. Uh, and for YouTube, you can reach it at chrism.kundalini. You just put the, that name in there, chrism.kundalini, and one of my videos will come up. And once you have one of the videos, you have all of the videos. Uh, let's see. You are not the only one. Hi, Mary Lou. <laughs> um, uh, um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that uh, question there. More of a statement than a question. Ah, okay. Um, I hope uh, everybody's able to hear this clearly. Uh, looks like there's some activity on the uh, on the chat list, and I'll ask Amelia Centara if she can if she can go over there for a moment. Uh, yes. So in this conversation, I would like to talk with you about the halo and, and the effect. That the halo has on this on the sensory body, as well as some of the anatomical, shall we say, the energetically anatomical dynamics of the halo. If you ever, if you do develop any kind of a question, you can call in. The call in number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. That's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. After a spinal sweep, and actually in some of the activation uh, experiences that are a prelude to the spinal sweep, one may feel a level of, of activation around the third eye area or the sixth chakra. There can be an internal bump that appears to be uh, expressing itself outward from between the eyes up about an inch and a half uh, onto the forehead. And this is a you know typical area. Now you know it's not exactly in the same place for everybody. You have to remember that everybody has a different shape of skull. Everybody has a unique manifestation of of physical bodies and anatomy you know in this lifetime. And so it won't be exactly the same place for everybody. But once you start feeling this expression from the inside of the skull pushing outward, you'll know where yours is. Okay, that, that is a very, very uh, clear understanding of, of uh, where your particular sixth chakra or third eye is, is pushing outward. You will not be able to feel this tactilely with your hand or your finger. It's not like you're growing a horn, but it sometimes has that feeling. It sometimes has that feeling. I remember when it was happening to me, I would constantly put my finger there going, what the heck is this? What? You know, what am I getting, a mole here? <laughs> What's going on here? And, uh, of course, you know, as, as the Kundalini educated me later on, and you know, it basically let me know what was going on with that. Um, I hope uh, everybody can hear me well. Oh, good, good. Thank you, uh, 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 guest number 1536.5. Thank you very much. Okay, so as as the sixth chakra becomes 
stimulated and you feel that that uh, that pressure from the inside out along your forehead, you may also begin to feel uh, distinct uh, pressures that almost feel electrical in nature. And, but I do say pressure because it will feel like you're wearing a helmet. It will feel as if there's a bowl over your head. And this is, uh, this is uh, the ancients would call this the golden helmet. The golden helmet. And you'll see that this will basically follow the hairline around the body, around the, around the, the skull. It'll go around your ears, it'll go down to your neck and follow the hairline all the way around your neck. You'll feel it around the whole body. And of course, the Kundalini is stimulating mine right now, so I have a very clear... <laughs> I, can, I can define this quite clearly uh, as, it is, as it is happening for me right now. This golden helmet is a forerunner of the halo. It is actually maybe the nascent halo as the person is continuously developing into the into their kundalini uh, equation and this nascent halo will begin to infiltrate or to spread into the seventh chakra uh, from the hairline inward and a person may begin to feel a lot of movement on the top of the head as if somebody is you know, if you had little elves dancing on the top of your head, and gosh, you know, I can't believe I just said the word elf or elves, but it's <laughs> it's really, it's, it's not an elf, and it isn't any kind of an entity. It is really the, the stimulation of the thousand-petaled lotus, as the Sanskriti people would call it, but it's also the stimulation of the crown, as I like to term it. And the stimulation of the crown as it becomes more and more stimulated, i.e. you begin to have more and more uh, sensation specific to the top of the head and the surrounding areas of, of, hair, of hair follicles, the thousand-petaled lotus is indeed being activated. And as it is activated, energy is running through it in, in, in a way that is far more pronounced than it would be without a kundalini activation. And this, this will eventually uh, help lead one into a spinal sweep, which is the kundalini uh, coming from the bottom of the spine, the last three vertebrae in the tailbone, and sweeping massively powerfully upward, uh, fusing all the chakras together for that moment, for that momentary time, and exiting out the crown exiting out the thousand petal lotus, lotus, almost like the the uh, a part of a flower, the 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 part of the flower that comes up and reaches up towards the sky. That that stem, it's not a stem, but it's that uh, little part of the flower that sticks up. I forget what the name of that is, but yes, yes, it is like that and. And as the flower opens, all the petals will open as well. And, and not all flowers have the petals open at the same time. Matter of fact, I have flowers in my garden right now who, are, who have petals that eventually open. But you will get this blooming sensation with the spinal sweep. And as that occurs, a whole level of energetic expression is being pumped into the crown or the thousand petals there. All of the hair follicles will begin to respond. You'll feel tactile uh, sensations of, of uh, electric insects running all over your head or electric serpents zipping and zapping all over the, the crown. It, and, and this will go on for a time. This is not a, a one-time event, uh, typically. This will go on uh, quite a bit of the time, and it is very, very profound for the person. But after this occurs, the halo really begins to collect and to emit levels of grace, levels of divine grace. Because with the spinal sweep, one has uh, a merging with the divine. One has a merging with the sacred source that is, is in many ways, unspeakable. There is... There is no word in any language of the human tongue that can really 
appropriately describe what is going on. It really, you know, I, I find it very difficult to talk about some of these areas because there is no verbal description. But as the spinal sweep occurs and one begins to merge into the divine, one becomes at one with everything. Every little grain of sand, every little dust particle, leaf, plant, animal, insect, uh, and, and some creations that the humanity has yet to discover that are, that are active on this world at this time. And so as this occurs, this, this level of divinity, not only are you merging into it, it is merging into you, and it begins a, a transformation of the physical, mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual bodies of, of the human being. And this, is, this feels just so great, it's so joyful, so amazing, so grounding, and yet so so otherworldly at the same time. It is such an amazing uh, merging of and expansion of a person's uh, sensation, knowledge, love, uh, just the, the whole spectrum of human existence is instantly expanded far beyond the parameters of what was set up before. So this is a very, very life-changing event. And as this divine emer merging comes into the person, the halo uh, is, is extraordinarily expanded. Uh, the light that comes from a person's halo is tactile. So think about it, tactile light. When you stick your hand in the sunshine and you feel that sun upon you, you're feeling the light. You're feeling you know, uh, components of light that uh, scientists like to call radiation or, you know, things of that level. Plus, you're getting a, a heat response. Well, it's a little different with the halo of an individual with, with awakened kundalini. The halo is tactile. You can feel it with your hand. It feels like like a cloud of electricity that is surrounding the person's head, and yet it isn't electricity, but it has some sensations that are similar to electricity. It's, it's almost like a, a, a powerful plasma that has exuded itself from the crown chakra and has expanded itself, sometimes, you know, 15 feet around a person's head. With the halo, with the halo has a tremendous expansion, expansion, but the aura has an even larger expansion when the divine merging has occurred. I mean, it it expands almost a mile in diameter. It's it's huge. It's huge. But with the halo, the halo is a form of condensed energetic divine expression that is that is pretty much limited to the crown chakra. The crown chakra becomes that flame of the divine that a person is experiencing. And as if, if for those of you that are, that are visiting from fa Facebook, uh, Amelia posted a picture of a, uh, of a head with the chakras uh, tied in these tiny little knots that you'll see in many of these South Asian nations that are, are depicting Buddha. They'll depict Buddha with, the, with these each, each hair kind of uh, formulated into a little knot on the top of the crown. And then as you get closer to the fontanelle, you will find that that crown begins to move upward, it, uh, almost as if the person is wearing a spike at the top of their head or an inverted uh, glass at the top of their head. And this is the permanent divine connection that occurs. And for those of us that have this, it's, what happens is you begin to lose a bit of sensation at the top of your head unless you touch it. You lose it, but what you gain is an expanse and an expansiveness of, of of conscious tactility that goes far beyond this earth and far beyond this galaxy and far beyond this dimension into the many, many, many other dimensions uh, that exist far beyond this focal point, and this is due to the divine interaction of the energetic anatomy. Now, 
Uh, sometimes people will feel uh, the light coming out of their forehead and around the back of their head and at the sides of the head as, as a spike. You'll, you'll put your hands around your head, you know, about, say, maybe a foot away from your head, and you'll feel these little spikes of light. And if you want to see a, a physical a picture of this, just one need only look at the Statue of Liberty in, in, in New York, off of New York in the harbor there, and you'll see that she's wearing a, a kind of a, a headband that is comprised of spikes. And this is an indication, once again, in our... In our um, in our material world, this is, an, this is an indication of a halo or a corona around an awakened person. I believe it is Columbia holding the torch of justice, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> don't quote me on that. I know it was a gift from, to the United States from France, I believe, for World War I. But anyway, as you, as you place your hands around, you may feel these spikes. And these spikes are, you know, it's a, it's a real deal that you're not imagining it. It is a real aspect of the energetic anatomy of the crown and of the halo. And these spikes will begin to converge upon themselves, forming many, many, many more spikes and, and beginning to expand itself upon the crown of the person, so much so that, that the spikes just become individual rays of light and you'll have trillions of them coming off of the top of the awakened person's head. And as that... Fontanelle extends itself into the cosmos, or the many, many cosmos. That, uh, that spike that a person seems to have, it's not really a spike. It's more like a, uh, I'm looking at a, at, a, at a glass right now that, that if I turned it upside down, it would be a pretty good uh, rendition of this. But uh, like a champagne glass, maybe. If you take the stem off of a champagne glass and then invert it and put it right on top of your of your fontanelle. That is a very, very apt description of what this, uh, this aspect of the energetic anatomy of the crown chakra awakened with kundalini begins to represent. And this, once again, is a, a strong and high level of connection to the many, many different dimensions, the many cosmos of, of, of what we are able to, able to interact with. And so if you have any questions about this aspect, of the Kundalini, please call in 347-934-0026. I will go ahead and continue. Uh, you may feel lots of movement on the top of the head. You may feel as if uh, the top of your head is, is really out of your control, and it, it, surely it is, uh, certainly at this time. But your sensory, ex uh, your sensory experience is also going to expand with this. Uh, you may begin to to interact with divinity in a much more uh, visual, tactile way. Uh, you may see a, a personage that represents your belief system, whether it's Buddha or Allah or Christianity or Zoroastrianism or shamanics. I mean, whatever your belief system is, uh, the Kundalini will adapt to that for your lower self, for your unihipili, as the huna people call it, as we discussed in another program, or your lower self, your ego self. Uh, because the kundalini, uh, quite uh, to the, to the uh, uh, well, it, it doesn't necessarily agree with some of the rules and some of the stated values that, that many of the different religions in our world will attribute it to. It doesn't necessarily want you to obliterate or destroy the lower self. It merely wants you to retrain it because it understands that you're living in a world where the lower self is running rampant. You know, just look at the United States right now. Oh my gosh, you know, it's just like, it's all about ego. It's all, oh, what kind of fashion are you wearing? Oh, what TV show are you? Oh, how long is your beard? And can you make duck calls for crying out loud? Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> It's all about the ego, the expressive ego. And as the United States goes, many other societies will want to go as well because they see the United States as being the, uh, the end-all, be-all for some forms of entertainment or pleasurable existence. And, you know, for them it may exactly be that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Kundalini 
would just as soon retrain the ego rather than kill it or destroy it or obliterate it. And then once that ego has been retrained, well, it becomes a very, very integral part of the, of the uh, trinity equation that a kundalini awakening has. Actually, it's, you know, it's 3.5 because the two that are one and the one that is two, they still contain that level of, of distinct separation. Uh, and for our benefit, that separation uh, uh, exemplifies itself as male and female, sacred male, uh, Shiva, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, a sacred female, uh, the white, green, red Taras, the Shakti, uh, Mary of the Christian faith, and and uh, you know even you know going to Greek mythology, you have a much stronger representation of sacred feminine than you do these days in in our current ones because patriarch patriarchal uh, standards having been adopted by so many uh, belief systems. So. You know, within that understanding, the, the the Kundalini understanding our societies, our many societies, it will begin to adapt itself into those areas of gender uh, specification that that allow us to find context and reference uh, within our experience with the Kundalini. Not that it's the way it must be, more so that it's the way that we need it to be at this time, as your Kundalini equation begins to mature. And you you may find how many different ideas of gender separation uh, are not applicable to divine grace as you begin to merge further and further and further into the heavenly fields. You may find that uh, gender separation doesn't necessarily need to occur. However, it does on this planet at this time right now. And so I certainly uh, want to, to make that clear. If you have any questions uh, about this, I would encourage you to call in at 347-934-0026. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and bring Her Holiness on, and that would be you, Miss Amelia. And I'd like to know if you were able to formulate any questions uh, before the show started. We didn't talk about it, so if you didn't, it's not a problem. No, I have. I have one, actually, that's relevant to this um, chrism. Okay. So the question is, I wondered about the head, because this is the image that you were describing there, the Buddha head, because as I sat in meditation recently, I felt a cone of energy rising, and it felt very much like the image. It rose about three inches, and that was it. There it stayed. So she's wondering about that. Um, this person has the awakened Kundalini, I would suspect. I yes, mean, yes. This, ah, is, this is actually you. Joe. This is Joe. Joe. Okay. Joe. Yeah. Hello, Joe. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Joe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it'll actually, uh, it'll raise even further than three inches. Um, it is that cone. It is an, it is a cone where the wide point of the cone is on top of the head and, and as it narrows, it it goes it goes further and further up. I'm just getting this picture of a cartoon of a kid wearing a a dunce's hat. Well, isn't it interesting that one of the uh, one of the most uh, recognized areas of enlightenment is somebody that is wearing uh, a form of a dunce's cap. I wonder if that's just some reverse uh, programming going on there by the different societies, it's certainly societies in the West. But yeah, as, you, as, you, as that cone uh, begins to rise, it, it will expand and, and it will continue to rise until you, you cannot feel the point of it, typically. You won't feel the point because the point actually doesn't occur. And a, a major expansion occurs. And that expansion is the, is, that cone is the touchstone of uh, merging between the divine and the physical mundane. And so, yes, Joe, absolutely. I would not be surprised at all that you are feeling these, these, uh, these um, artifacts on, on top of your crown, and you'll feel it more and more and more. Uh, eventually, uh, all of the 
of the uh, petals on the human head will will form uh, a, a, a connection this way. Uh, it's extremely important that you don't for for those who are awakened, it's very important that you don't use hair products that are damaging to the hair follicle or to the skin. For those of you that are dyeing your hair, and I, of course I'm speaking to all the men out there who are dying to be blonde, I would suggest that you do not use any hair products. You don't use any hair. If you don't understand what is on the ingredients list of the hair product that you're putting on your crown chakra, don't put it on. Don't put it on. And uh, Laura Soaring, I, I, it is alive. It is, it is live listening, Laura, just to answer your question there. I saw that. Um, do not use any hair product. And, and for men and women, if you can begin to grow your hair long, I understand that it isn't appropriate for everybody due to the societal programming uh, certainly that we have in the West is, you know, men must have very, very short hair and women can have whatever kind of hair they want. Okay, uh, as, as far as that goes, when you have the awakened crown chakra, you must do everything you possibly can do to let the natural course of events occur on that crown chakra. And that means, you know, taking out any kind of the the, the, the harsh bleaching chemicals that, you know, tend to dry out, destroy uh, hair follicles. Men, uh, the same with you. I, I notice these little sugar-based uh, uh, types of uh, hair products that people are putting on the top of their head. Let your hair grow if you can possibly do it, men. Seriously, do that. If you have to have a ponytail, that's just fine. It's kind of in vogue in some parts of the world today. Native American men would, you know, they have always uh, shown a, a, a predilection towards having longer hair. And as they were being uh, inducted into the Army in World War II and they, sh and, and they were forced to have their hair shaved off, they lost a huge level of their sensory input. Okay, and certainly with a Kundalini person. Now, I understand, I understand, you know, the people are going, well, what about the Tibetan monks? You know, they shave their head. What about Buddhist monks? They shave their head. Well, yes, they do. Most of them don't have the Kundalini awakened, however. And let me tell you, in order to tie those little hair in knots on that, on that Buddha, you got to have some hair to tie. Or you're not going to have it. That's not, that doesn't mean you're not going to have the awakening. Once again, kundalini is very flexible. Kundalini is very, very flexible. Dreads are fine. Sukha, dreads are fine. As long as you let them grow and as long as you're not using chemicals to make them dreads. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You want, to, you want to begin to really look at a level of purity with how you interact with the seventh chakra, the divine connection with you. Divinity doesn't necessarily like you any more or less if you are blonde. I know, it's a shock. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really care whether you have that perm or whether you have that blonde hair or, or any of the colors that people like to, to play around with. Uh, if you are serious about your kundalini, if you are nurturing towards your kundalini, if you would like to do everything you can do to bring a greater level of manifestation, transformation, awareness, and understanding of your kundalini to all parts of your body, all parts of your mental mind, all parts of your heart, your emotional body, all parts of these areas, then you must begin to adopt a pure, a pure form of, of understanding what it is you do with that crown chakra. Try to take it out of the realm of, of ego-based vanity I'll say that again try to take it out of the realm of ego based vanity I'm working with one student right now and you know she was putting all kinds of uh, product in her hair you know to make her hair this way or that way and but once the kundalini came you know and we started working together well she she very much so was able to adjust the way uh, she washed her hair and cleaned, you know, the rinse, I guess, they, you know, after you wash your hair, they, 
with long people with long hair they they put a cream rinse on it to make it I think easier to to brush. Just try to make everything organic and 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 try to understand what it is you're putting on your hair and listen to your kundalini. Listen to your kundalini tell you and and typically, not all the time, but typically when a person reaches a level of understanding about their hair with the kundalini, the kundalini will say, keep the hair products off. Now, there are some hair products that, that work quite well. Coconut oil, organic coconut oil is not bad for the hair. It is not bad for the scalp, and it is not bad for the crown chakra. Okay? So there are alternatives. You just have to, Hannah, <laughs> I don't know, Elizabeth, I never talked to my kundalini about henna or using vegetable dyes, as long as they're organic and as long as they're not uh, in any way harmful to that to the hair color. But you want to look at why are you using it in the first place? What is it a person would be hanging on to here? What attachment does a person have with a, with a, with a dye that is going into the hair. And why does that person have an attachment? What is wrong with the hair the way it comes out naturally? What is wrong with that? Okay. And so, you know, we need to look at what is happening to how we interact with society. You know, look at the programming. My gosh, the the hair product industry is humongous. It's a billion, billion, billion dollar in industry. And it goes through Western Europe, it goes into Asia, it goes into the United States, uh, Brazil, uh, Canada. I mean, every, you know, the majority of this world, you know, the women are looking at uh, hair products to put on their crown chakra. Have a look at that. And once again, <clears throat> take the dye, you know, if you can, take any of the dyes out of your out of your uh, the menu for your scalp cleansing and and uh, look at the level of vanity uh, that you have with the attachment to the hair follicle and the hair color and the the quality of the hair you, that you have and, and another aspect of this of this uh, this halo crown chakra uh, is the nutrition what are you eating what are you eating that that is you know, having a detrimental effect upon your crown. What are you not eating that may also be having a detrimental effect upon your crown chakra or your halo? Now, the halo will adjust itself in size. Other people can come up and, and feel it. They can feel the halo. They can feel it in their palm chakras, the palm of their hand. They can feel it with the with the fingertip chakras. It's a very, very tactile thing. And, and uh, one of the one of the ways, you know, for, for people that are not kundalini active or aware, you know, you have them rub their hands a little bit just to, just to clear any kind of uh, energy away. But it also enlightens the energy of the hand chakra. And then just have them with an open palm slowly come towards your head. And to the degree that they can feel it, they will feel it. They will feel it. It is, it is not, uh, it's not being hidden by anyone or by any force. The halo is an amazingly powerful connection. And, and this is, when I'm doing these radio shows, it's the halo, that, the, that, that divine merge. This is where the conversation's coming from. And this is where your convoca conversations of a... Of a uh, of a spiritual nature, of a prayerful nature, of a meditational nature, of a, of a direct conversation with divine nature will emanate from. And don't think that, any, that all the other chakras are just being ignored. You have to understand that when that spinal sweep occurs, and, and, and partially even before that spinal sweep occurs, all the chakras connect to the crown chakras. It's like all roads lead to Rome. Okay, and all religions lead to Kundalini. Well, all chakras lead to the crown chakra. They all have representation 
on the top of your head, which should really, you know, give you even even more of an impetus to really take care of the top of your head. You don't need to be wearing hats all the time. Let that solar connectivity occur. I'm not saying go out and get a sunburn, but I'm saying, yeah, let a certain amount of that solar radiance occupy the top of your head. Let your kundalini dictate what it would have you do with regards to the amount of time the top of your head is exposed to the sunlight. And that includes the, the moonlight as well, the nighttime. Let the top of your head be exposed as much as you can. Realize that any of those stars that you see in the nighttime sky can be connected to with your crown chakra. And certainly you don't want to, you know, make a goal of connecting to the stars because not all stars well just say it's a big aquarium and, and the best way to, the best connection is with the divine. You let your inner divine do what it needs to do. And you kind of keep your ego desires and wants out of the uh the matrix with that. And now uh, if you have any any questions about any of this, please call in at this number. So United States area code three four seven Nine three four zero zero two six. I would like to go ahead and invite uh, Amelia to the into the Shakti zone here. There she is. Uh, oops, I'm oops, in. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yes. Let me fix that. It looks like I almost put another person there. What is your experience with this, Amelia? Oh, um, interestingly, Chris, and when I had my um, the spinal sweep, so we're talking back in 2007, um, I experienced um, that's what you were talking about earlier, where the crown chakra completely opened and that <laughs> spike, to call it a spike, went up so, so high that for quite a while, when I used to walk around, I could feel it. I used to bend down going through doors. It was, you know, that... Oh, that's, it went up. that's very true. I <laughs> forgot to mention that. Yeah, yeah. So stand by a second, up. Amelia. Stand by for a second. Everybody, when you have the halo develop, don't go on a roller coaster. You'll find yourself ducking your head every time some sort of a, of a low ceiling begins to impact your your uh, your halo. I mean, uh, it's 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 a very real phenomenon, and and it will cause you, as as Amelia just stated, it will cause you to duck your head. Please continue, Santara. Well, that didn't last. So while you know while you're talking, that you know that that in a way went away. That was just my initial experience, and then after that. And um, the halo, you know, the helmet, I began to experience that. And I began to experience the um, the helmet, the halo, and the spikes. And now, currently, I mean, the, the top of my head is kind of not there most of the time. Yeah. Like yeah. In, in, the cent- in the center. But <clears throat> if I bring my attention... It's as if then I become aware of it expanding more. That's that's how it is now. But nothing like that initial um, thing. I, it's not like that anymore, or never was since really. Well, uh, you know, you are you are still inside your equation, and and it's not that you'll ever go back to that. You only get to have one first time in many of these scenarios, and and the. Uh, the real, uh, and I'm going to put you into the Shiva zone here, Amelia. Uh, when you have a first-time event with the Kundalini, typically uh, the reason why it is so tactile is because it is the, the difference between the mundane and the divine is so stand out that that the tactility comes from that differentiation. As a person begins to acclimate into these areas, well, then that differentiation begins to be eliminated. And as it is slowly eliminated, it begins to become normal. And as Santara was just saying, you know, she doesn't feel it now because she's become acclimated to it. 
but there's still more to go. I mean, there's there are greater, greater levels of of interaction with the Kundalini that don't depend upon tactility. And yet our ego mind is often going to be looking at, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't feel it anymore. What what did I do wrong? Is the Kundalini mad at me? I get this a lot. And I'm not this isn't necessarily pertaining to Centara at all. Uh, you know, she has she has far more uh, experience and knowledge with the uh, the Kundalini than that. But for the newer person, you know, you know that's a that would be a legitimate question. You know, am I doing something not right that is diminishing the tactility of the Kundalini upon my crown or upon my halo? And no, 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 it is not a it is not a a, a, a non moving event. It is constantly evolving. All of your chakras, all of your your bodily systems, the 17 trillion cells that make up you are also being transformed. It is never, never, never uh, holding still. It is constantly moving. And this goes with your crown chakra and this goes with the cone of the crown at the top of the head. That is constantly evolving. As you, as you become more and more acclimated in the other areas of your kundalini awakening experience, well, you will also be expanding in the the crown chakra as well, and going further and further, and your light is becoming brighter and brighter and brighter. And this brightness will attract, uh, shall we say, luminous insects. And I don't know, some of you may have been following a conversation I had with a person I call James on Facebook. And, you know, James is going through experiences that that uh, are you know, showing a, a, a strong level of darkness in, 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 you know, with, with uh, satanic uh, types of references and things of that nature. And, and, you know, to really, to just really illustrate this for us, the first thing the Kundalini in me wants to say to you, all of you, is that without discomfort, you will not consciously evolve. Pain is the greatest teacher for spiritual evolution that the human being has access to. And in this way, the Kundalini will begin to access levels of of trauma within you and levels of trauma that are outside of you, that that are uh, exemplified through groups and individuals of a societal nature that begin to promote and to program our earthly experience into people that are living in the land of lamentation, as Magdalene had come to her the other day, the land of lamentation. Magdalene de Deus is, is, is another of my students, and, and uh, you know she's she she is having very very strong and direct experiences of Kundalini divine coming into her, and this land of lamentation. Is so appropriate because without that lamentation, we would all just kind of sit back on the on the couch, watch TV until we died, with very very little spiritual evolution occurring. Well, the Kundalini will bring you in touch with these dark areas of yourself, but also the dark areas of the society that you live in. It doesn't mean that you know. I'm, well, I guess for a certain amount of time, yes, you'll be focused on. These dark areas. For for myself, I was focused on them for, for in my opinion, quite some time, and and I had to be able to move through them, and I moved through them by choosing to consciously help other people, to give my energies into the assistance of, in in my case, with the Kundalini and with other uh, aspects uh, that I was able to to give into society uh, appropriate with my skills and my talents. And this is what will happen to many different people. Your, your darkness will not, will not be my darkness. My darkness will not be Centaur's darkness. Centaur's darkness will not be Magdalene's darkness. Magdalene's darkness won't be Fasti's darkness. Not that Fasti has any level of darkness whatsoever. He is, well, he is doing well. And I will have that conversation with you, Fasti, after this, after this broadcast. Now, uh, I'm going to bring Centara back on. Here you are, Centara. 
please and continue with your description of your experience. Well, to go back maybe to what you said about hair products as well. Um, so I have stopped using hair products and cutting my hair eventually and the ego and all of that. And so my hair is now is now grey. And it's really interesting because when the activity was going on in my head, you know, I have felt those um, little insects and those electric serpents and a lot going on in, let's say, where the hair meets the root and up a little bit. But quite recently, actually, during the Shakti path, you know, you, you were explaining there, I think, on the group about this added sensory perception we have when we leave our hair grow. And for the first time ever, I, I, I felt the, the energy or the, I know it isn't electricity, but moving out right along the whole length of the hair. And that was, um, that was actually, I had never experienced that before. So it, it affirmed for me, I suppose, um, as well what you had been, had been telling us, you know. It was quite profound and quite amazing. And, and a lot of a lot of men it's still there. A, yeah, a lot of men will will go, "Well, hey, dude, I'm like go, losing my hair." It's like, well, how does that factor into the equation? You know, the dehydrotestosterone is just wreaking havoc on my hair. Well, all I have to ask you is, what is it you're scraping off your face every day? Oh. The body compensates. The body compensates, and, and you'll notice that even women with, 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 uh, with uh, uh, hair that is thinning, you know, they're still not growing it on their face, and that's okay, but let the kundalini come into that woman's hair who is thinning and see what happens to her hair then. You know, let her eat products such as choline bitartrate and lecithin, and these are some products that I would, these vitamins, I would uh, certainly uh, suggest people who are concerned about their hair, you know, Choline bitartrate, lecithin, L-cysteine amino, amino acid, uh, you know, these types of, of nutrients greatly increase the hair. Baker's yeast is, an, is another product. Uh, and there, there are many, many natural products, as Elizabeth was mentioning, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the vegetable dyes. And, and uh, you know, you can get those, I think, that are in an organic uh, state. Uh, but once again, you know, we're looking at, you know, why are we not happy with who we are as we are within the, yeah. within the divine merging? Yeah, yeah. And, and let me ask you about that, Centaur, if you don't mind. Um, what is the difference now as opposed to the difference that, say, you were, you know, two years ago when you were using the hair product? Well, on different levels, on the level of my actual hair itself, it's getting thicker. It feels fabulous. I mean, John loves it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually, like, no, but seriously, to actually touch now, it's really, really nice. It had become very unconditioned and, and, and not great, even though I was using all the products. I mean, the difference in the quality of my hair is amazing. And um, in terms of my ego, and the fact that I'm grey, and that was a big, you know, that 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 took that took a little bit of time for me. You know, I was reluctant to let go of the blonde, uh, because of all the, I suppose, conditioning we have from society about what grey represents, and so, you know. That took a little bit of time, even though I was willing to do it, and um, my ego fought hard on that one for a little while. So that was a really interesting process, and um, it's been really valuable to me in the last in the last year or so since since I've stopped using the dye. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's the deal with the hair, everybody. And remember, we're talking about the halo and the crown chakra, but the hair is an exudate of those two areas. It is a physical manifestation of the crown chakra and, and where the halo extends from the body. And so you, you, you want to really begin to understand that. And Kundalini will, will travel down the length of the hair follicle. The hair follicle is basically a tube 
made out of keratin and some other other you know components and the kundalini will flow down that tube and and really illuminate that tube and and at the beginning stages this is what will will whip the follicle around wildly is that that uh that as the energy enters the tube of the hair. And, and as I've mentioned before on this program, the mm. Chitrini the tr- Chitrini channel is also the whip of a very long hair strand that goes from the base of the spine to the top of the fontanelle. Okay? So as the Kundalini whips through the, the Chitrini channel and the Chitrini channel uh, illuminates the entire spine, momentarily fusing the chakras together and then exploding out the top of the fontanelle, well, so are the hair follicles being inundated from the inside out with this amazing level of energetic plasma that the kundalini is as it comes into the, into the physical systems. Did you, did you have something to say, uh, Amelia, about that? Well, my hair actually has got curly, <laughs> you know, and at times it gets very curly and, and um, it is a, my hair is typically straight. But recently it got very, very curly during, during a period of, of that activity I was describing. So would that be what you're talking about there too? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the kundalini will definitely curl your hair. No doubt about it. It'll curl your toes too. <laughs> it'll, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. it'll definitely curl the hair it'll yeah because somebody hair. thought I had permed it and I mean no it's just the way it's going you know so anyway and so, um, well yeah go ahead Next well question. no I, I don't have anything else to say but I, I have some questions that move away from this topic will I go there Prism? if you wish okay so Trina um has a question and I just want to scroll I have it down here and um, yes she wanted to know if you would talk about a top-down activation versus a bottom-up spinal sweep activation she had a few questions so if I put them all together there's four of them maybe that would be better and then go okay? ahead yeah ask them ask them all okay maybe the so she, cover. she says yeah could you talk about a top-down activation versus a bottom-up spinal sweep activation? How are the effects different for a person? Would there be any differences in practices of safety protocols for each with top-down in a spinal sweep? No, with top-down, is a spinal sweep always involved? With a top-down activation, what about issues with the lower chakras, grounding, physical issues, feeling distor- disorientated and balanced, unbalanced, etc.? Okay, all right. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, I'll <laughs> take the last one first. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have uh, a chakra activation in the lower chakras, then yeah, you're going to be unbalanced. And you know, a top-down. Uh, Kundalini awakening is, you know, a person is far more prone to having a Kundalini uh, syndrome scenario present themselves. Uh, in many ways, when we go bottom to top, it is density becoming refined. With a top down, it's refinement trying to go back into density, and that is a much more difficult uh, equation. But it is, it is what it is for some people, and a lot of the kids that are doing drugs such as uh, psilocybin or LSD or, you know, any, any, even, even, you know, some of the amphetamines and, and, you know, these types of things, a person can indeed begin to experience a top-down uh, kundalini awakening. Now, is a spinal sweep involved? Uh, no, well, actually, sort of. Uh, the apana is, is the Sanskrit term for down-flowing energy or energy of release, where, this is what allows the body to defecate. It's what allows the body to release toxins from the system. So, you know, a downward flow from an aponic uh, energetic source will will lend itself into the kundalini awakening experience, and the kundalini can co-opt that apana, uh, the aponic downward releasing flow, and and basically the person, you know, will have kind of a reverse. 
final sweep to some degree, although the, you know, the, the fusing of the chakras won't occur. Uh, they'll be kind of spacey. They'll be spacey a lot of the time. They'll be prone to fear. They'll be, you know, they'll, they'll be prone to entity possessions. Uh, they'll still have a, you know, they'll, they may have a very, very beautific experience at first, certainly. Anytime we, we come in contact with the, the truth of, div, of our divine nature, it's typically a very beautiful experience. Uh, but eventually, uh, purifications and, and detoxification will need to occur. And, and this is where some of the really, really difficult levels uh, can be experienced with regards to the top-down manifestation. Now, there are different, there are different uh, awakening equations. Um, you know, some people will, it'll go, it'll, they'll have a heart activation. Uh, some people will start at the base of the spine. Some people will go heart uh, to throat, throat to second second to sixth, sixth to first, and, and the third, you know, maybe they're having a, you know, maybe a, a lot of, uh, in, you know, invalidation in their lives, and the third will be last, and, you know, it can get very, very, very uh, confusing for a person, certainly within the top-down matrix, and if a person is having a top-down matrix because of their lifestyle or because of the drugs they've done or because of an accident or maybe it's just a karmic a karmic uh, uh, ex experience for them to have, uh, then it is best to, to just go straight to the base of the spine. You go straight to the base of the spine, and typically that top-down manifestation will meet at the heart, and this will blossom into a heart activation. This is like that big check mark. That I that I mentioned in other shows, uh, the big check mark that the heart always begins uh, the the Kundalini, whether it's top down or bottom up, the heart always begins it like that check mark. And so, as a person uh, begins to to go to the base, well, they're basically building the bridge from both sides at once. They're building it from the from the from one side and they're also building it from the other side and so they'll meet in the middle so to speak and as you meet in the middle well you have this huge explosion of love and and joy and happiness and benefit but you also have severe levels of detoxification such as uh, you know love for yourself love for people that have hurt you forgiveness tolerance patience impatience anger or joy and so you have to go through these refining aspects as well in order to, to really begin to focus in on to the, the actual expansion of the divine merging that is, that is wanting to occur, which is why you're even detoxing in the first place. Was that as clear as mud? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's excellent. I mean, I, no, I think you covered everything except maybe the safety protocols would well, they the be practiced yeah. in the same way. Yes, absolutely. You do the five Tibetans the exact same way. Wow, I can hear myself. Okay. Uh, you do. <laughs> no, I can't. You're not. You're not. You're not um, echoing. That's good, good. Well, that's good. To, okay. So, yeah, you do the safeties the exact same way. Your levels of forgiveness are increased. Your tolerances are increased. Your impatience is decreased. Uh, your levels of openness uh, uh, about yourself and who you are and how you are. Your third chakra is, is balanced. You're not so into yourself, and you're not so not into yourself. You're balanced. The middle path has been achieved in, in every chakra. You know, if you practice the safeties in a in a cogent and 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 consistent way, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Susan. Julie has a question there from the chat room. She says, "Okay, since we're talking since we're talking about spinal sweeps, can you elaborate on a spinal sweep that stopped at the sixth chakra?" Well, yeah, people have levels of 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 work that they need to do in their lives. A lot of karma occurs to a person that's going to be coming into the Kundalini. It's, it's very much like that Chinese curse. May you meet all your karma in one life, right? And so a Kundalini person, even as a child, is undergoing karmic detoxification or karmic balancing. 
And as the Kundalini spinal sweep comes up to that person, when the time is right, it comes up. And if it's, you know, a lot of the times it'll stop at the fifth chakra. The fact that this person's chakra, you know, sixth chakra was stopped at is, is, is actually quite a bonus. Uh, so it stops at the fifth, and that means that the first five chakras really need to be, to be detoxed first before, before that energy is allowed to be released into the crown chakra. So the scenario is, is that you're cleaning up the house before you invite sacred mom and sacred dad over for dinner. Okay, you're, you're cleaning up the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and in this case, the sixth chakra uh, first before the, uh, there's, a, there's an organ in the, in the, in the, at the base of the uh, fifth chakra that's called the hammer in, in, some, uh, in, in some of the Asian contexts. And this hammer is a, is, it basically filters energies that, is not, that are not appropriate at that time to come into the crown chakra. Crown chakra is a very, very sensitive place. The, the divine will take care and, and, and take great uh, level of interest in the quality of energies that are coming in to the crown chakra. And so as that spinal sweep occurs, you know, I don't care if it stops at the third, fourth, fifth, sixth chakra, those areas need to be detoxed first before the kundalini will allow it to continue uh, another spinal sweep coming out the fontanelle. Um, issues of, of how you create your life, how you see yourself in the context of the kundalini, how you see yourself in, con in context of society, and most importantly, how you see yourself in the context of you and where you're going and what you're doing and how you're doing what you're doing and the attitudes you have behind how you're doing what you're doing. There's a lot of work that most people need to have done. I know it took me years and years and years, you know, to do this type of thing. It, you know, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's not always a short path. And the, for those who take the short path, well, then they're, they're often going to have the top-down experience, which is far more difficult. More people are in the psych ward because they had a top-down than those who have had a bottom-to-top. And with a... With a, person, with a person having it stop at the sixth chakra, well, it can really give them a, a boost of confidence because it shows that, that the kundalini is well aware of what is going on in their system. It is stopping it right before it explodes into the, the divine merge. Once again, as I've said in other shows, in the divine merge, you don't get to have fear. You don't get to have fear as a building block of, your, of the cathedral within you that you are. Of the of the of the of the uh, uh, <laughs> what's that word? Uh, well, the word that's coming is the Ark of the Covenant that you are. You are that covenant, and you are that Ark. Okay, you are that grace embodiment upon this planet. But you need to do some detoxing first shows far more that is going right for that individual than is going wrong. As I said before, most of the time, depending on your religious system, uh, the, if, you, if you're not going to have a full spinal sweep, it'll stop at the throat chakra. You know, for the, uh, for the uh, I think, uh, a lot of the Taoists and the Qigong people, you know, they, they operate from a five chakra system that they that they correlate with the five fingers and five toes and the different mudras and the different uh, technologies that they've produced around those, that system. Whereas uh, the Kundalini in me is really mostly observant of the seventh chakra physical system, but with, with many other chakras as you expand into the, into the higher selves of the Atman and the, and the higher spiritual selves that, uh, that people don't really know about. Some of the Sanatana people know about it. Um, uh, there's a there's a book out by I be, believe his name is Amit Mukherjee, and it says Kundalini with a big golden statue on the cover, and, and it shows some of the ancient uh, Rishi uh, understandings of chakra overlays. So you have the physical chakra, and then you have the higher dimensional chakras that will begin to overlay upon the physical. And this is really the divine overlay 
that occurs upon a person, and this this is you know this is also a a, a very strong level of feeling and sensation that a person can have, and and uh, I'd like to thank you, Julie, for asking that that excellent question. Go ahead, Amelia. There is a question from Julia as well. She says, how about a spinal sweep that goes all the way up through the head? Whoops, the whole thing just moved there. Sorry, I'm I'm scrolling again. Okay, how about a spinal sweep that goes all the way up through the head and then comes back down again where you can feel the energy working through each chakra from the top down for days afterwards? Is this fairly common as well? Yes, it is. It is to some degree common, but uh, Julia, Julia is, 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 you know, partaking of an Asian system as well for much of her life. You know, so, you know, once again, you know, the Asians are, are far more. They like to use things of, of that are called mac. Their orbits, macrocosmic orbit and a microcosmic orbit, and her mentors may have uh, translated her part of her awakening process into a uh, the belief system that uses a macro and a, and a microcosmic orbit. Uh, this is absolutely legitimate. It's the, the you know it, it isn't necessary that you have to have micro or macrocosmic orbits. And I know I get a lot of heat for this because everybody wants it to be the same way, you know, cookie cutter kundalini, right? But it's not. It's different for each person. And some people, you know, they have the microcosmic orbit. Uh, and and let, me, let me give you the big secrets here, just because we're, we're trying to be as clear as possible. A macrocosmic orbit is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, a point of light that is circulated out on the outside of the body, going straight up the shusumna. But, you know, so on the outside of the body, it'll, it'll go up your chest and, you know, on the top of your skin, over your your uh, you know through the the sternum and the and the you know following the chakras on the outside, going up to the top of the head and then coming down the back, or it'll go down the back and come up the front. And then at the same time, there is another point of light that is at the base of the spine that is spun to the right. You consciously spin it. And that's, that spinning ball of light comes up. The shusumna itself comes up into the top of the head. It, uh, it hits the, uh, the, the, the rear cranium and then the forward cranium. And then it reflect, or deflects itself back down to the base of the spine, doing this over and over and over. And so the two orbits you know, are to be done at the same time for those who are able to, to visualize that type of an occurrence. Now, for Julia's uh, question, it is absolutely normal. And she is feeling uh, the, the kundalini do you know, follow that orbit. And that orbit is, is just as substantial and it, you know, it can be karmically directed as well. Um, you know, vis-a-vis probably her attraction to, to some of the, uh, the Asian platforms at all. Uh, you know, with a, with, a, uh, with a karmic influence from those previous experiences within the Asian platforms and also with a resonance of the current uh, platform that she was experiencing uh, when the spinal sweep occurred, and is this? I think she, uh, Julia, if you can answer my question, um, didn't you just recently have a, a spinal sweep? Isn't this is this something that just happened recently? <clears throat> Laura Soaring, I like your cat. <laughs> yeah, well, so I'll, I'll wait for uh, Julia to to answer that question. That's basically a yes or no question. But, uh, she says, yeah, Laura says her cat likes your voice, Chris. Yes. <laughs> I'm topic. talking to Julia, actually, though. I'm talking to Julia, who asked the question, right? Hello? Oh, I see. Okay. So, anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is absolutely normal. It is, a, it is, it is a, an artifact, a sensorial artifact of Julia's activation, awakening sequence. And yeah, and, and because Julia has been practicing 
for so long and because Julia has really, really given herself into a divine matrix, uh, yeah, she will have levels of tactility that are more composed and more concentrated than those who may not have, have given themselves so far into the activation uh, sequence. And so, she yeah, has yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's BV there. That's Julia. Oh, last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so also I do the microcosmic naturally. <laughs> there you have it, folks. There you have it. Uh, and, you know, and, and for a lot of the Asian practices, the, the micro and macrocosmic orbit are the big thing to do. You know, you got to do this and you have to do that. Well, you don't have to do that. You don't. It is not a, necess- a necessity and it will not increase your enlightenment. It is more of a... Of a uh, somewhat of an ego-based manual uh, operation. Uh, the Kundalini is, you know, the Kundalini, because she's doing it, will amplify what it is she's doing, uh, but it's not necessary for anybody that, that, that isn't doing it to, to keep doing it. The, the one thing that is necessary is that you recognize the Kundalini and you, you surrender yourself into that process, and it will manifest uh, whatever kind of uh, sensorial experience that you need to have for your equation at that time. And don't think that just because it's happening one way during a certain period of time that it isn't able to change. Of course, it is able to change. Absolutely. And even as Amelia uh, herself has just stated, you know, she's, you know, since she stopped putting the hair product in her, in her crown chakra and she stopped... Uh, you know, cutting the hair, uh, you know, she is indeed experiencing more of a sensorial practice and so, uh, or a sensorial experience. And so you're most welcome, uh, Julia, absolutely, most welcome. And uh, so any other questions that uh, that people may have? Well, Diva, uh, Ma Diva Sajdi, she said actually she stopped coloring her hair two months ago and that it was an ego thing for sure and hard to let go of it. So she enjoyed the conversation. And she actually has a question for you as well. It says, um, Kundalini seems so vast and expanding. I find myself becoming more silent than ever, and yet in a kind of free fall. Contradiction in silence reminds me of the Tower of Babel. Does that make any sense to you, Chrism? Well, Tower of Babel is a biblical story. Um, of uh, the confusion of tongues, uh, which is why you know, you know, in the Christian context, you know, people were uh, abusing their communication abilities in some ways, and and <laughs> so I don't buy into this, but okay, but and, and so the 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 God of of the Christians, you know, stepped in and confused everybody's voices so that they could no longer abuse each other through having, you know, telepathic or other kinds of communication in common with each other. I don't buy that so much, um, but I do understand uh, 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 where you're coming from uh, with, with regards to that. And, and silence is a beautiful place to be. Silence. And if you feel you're falling, then you're actually flying. So you're flying silently through the vast... Uh, amazing levels of grace that Kundalini does bring and and uh, I will suggest that you grow that hair long as well and that you let it fly out with you feel your universe feel your multiverse you know and let yourself be silent we don't always have to make noise noise is not the end-all, be-all of communication. You can communicate with just a look without using words. You can communicate with a smile. How much noise does a smile make? And yet it can be so, so very communicative, just like a frown. So, that, you know, their non-vocal communication, NVC, is really, really not a bad thing. And if the Kundalini in you is uh, is is guiding you towards NVC, then go with that and find the serenity with that. Find the serenity. 
And I see Steve Jarecki. I don't remember his week, but on many occasions I've had energy showering out the top of my head when experiencing joy associated with certain uh, with thoughts of the Divine Mother. Yes, indeed, Steve, and it's just a prelude. It's a prelude. I mean, you'll get it. You'll get it eventually. No doubt about it. I mean, you keep you keep uh, participating as you have been within the Kundalini, and you will indeed have that spinal sweep, and you will remember it. You will remember it. Uh, any more questions, Santara? Yes, there's one here from um, Triana, another one. It says, what's the deal with etherum or etherum gold monatomic white gold minerals? Ah. To take ah, them or not to take them, and why? <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. Those are excellent questions. Yeah, let's, let's talk about monatomic, shall we? High spins, high spin rates. Unless you buy the... the the 100% gold yourself, and you cook it yourself, and you apply that blonde, slightly blonde-colored monatomic material into a you know a, a 500 milligram veggie cap. Unless you do it yourself, I'm pretty sure you're not getting the real deal when you when you spend 40 or 50 bucks and and get the Mount Shasta black. Monatomic gold found on the slopes of the volcano. No, no, no. This is just, this is just a. I'll just kindly call it a bunch of hooey. Okay, these are not, and, and you know, let's not, you know, I don't care what kind of a solution they put it into. This is, this is a, one of the, the the farces that are inflicted upon those who who are seriously trying to find a way to bring uh, a greater level of, of divine expression through them, through the, an outside-to-inside uh, force, uh, not an inside-out. I mean, this is like, okay, I'll eat the monatomic gold, and boom, I'm enlightened. It is not that way. Now, if you cook it up yourself, what you basically do is you push yourself straight into the astral, and, and from there you can become extremely... You can have a very, very profound experience at first, but afterwards you're 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 fighting off uh, demons, you're fighting off entities. You're you know a lot of stuff is trying to possess you because you haven't gone through the refinement levels that the chakra system gives you. The chakras aren't there because they're pretty colors. Oh, what a nice rainbow bridge! No, they serve actual functions for the energetic anatomy and the and the seven levels of human expression that come from that energetic anatomy. And to bypass that, like the Egyptians did, and, and take a uh, you know, monatomic gold, or you know, they've got monatomic gold, monatomic platinum, monatomic this and that. I would say save your money. And, and you know, those people, you know, those... <laughs> They're pulling a they're pulling a fast one over people because they you know people can you know they can put a trace amount of gold into a solution and call that high spin monatomic, but it's not. It's not you know and so if anybody takes them to court on it and says, well they promised to have high spin monatomics of black gold from the slopes of Mount Shasta, you know and the judge is just going to look at them like they're nuts because science doesn't recognize it. So until you cook it up yourself, and you know the recipe's out there on the web. It's you know it's not hard to do. You can do it in your your trailer. Just make sure that you get a good evacuation system. Um, you know, and it's going to cost you at, at least you know a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to get pure gold, which is chemically pure gold. It's not, you know, it's it's the purest gold that you can get, uh, and you know you can cook that up. But you know I don't recommend it. I'd suggest you just. Do the safeties practice and, and work it through the chakra system like the divine gave us to work through. And I'm not I'm not gonna you know, I'm not pinpointing you, Trina. I looked into these myself. <laughs> I even have the recipe. I know how to cook it up. But I don't want to. I don't want to cook it up. I don't need to cook it up, and neither do you. But you do need to do the work. 
You do need to do the detoxification. You do need to do the safeties. You do need to do the five Tibetans. And as Fasci just so appropriately said, there are no shortcuts to enlightenment. The chakra system, the human system, is in place already. You don't need 12-strand DNA. You don't know anything but two and the one that, that that produces. You don't need any of this. That's more hooey, by the way. You know, that's a lot of hooey right there. Uh, uh, what What's his name? That chiropractor out of L.A. You know, he wrote a good book. He's a good-looking guy, so lots of people believe him. But, hey, you know, they deserve what they get, in my opinion, if this is how they're going to, to judge their, a, a spiritual leader for themselves. Uh, no, you don't need to have any of that. You have it already in your body, along your spine. I don't care if you do the five or the seven chakra system. I don't care. You have it in you. It is nascent within you right now. You can do it. You can start today. Okay? You don't need to take those mon monatomics. And, you know, uh, Trina, I yes, I went ahead and I bought the... Uh, the monatomic, uh, I think it was monatomic gold, and uh, and I tried it and I just laughed at myself for my my naivete. I says, oh my gosh, I didn't even need to do this, but I just wanted to try it so that I could say something about it. You don't need monatomics, and as you know, like that she said, there are no shortcuts to enlightenment. Even, even so, what we are talking about here, we're just bringing this stuff out into the open. We're bringing sacred understanding, sacred, uh, I don't even like to use the word technology, because there's no technology to the kundalini. It is, it's a divine force. We're bringing the teachings of this divine force into the public venue. And it, what, will, what, what typically happens is a person's own kundalini will attract them to these teachings. We don't advertise this site very much. I mean, we give it a go on, on Yahoo. We give it a go on Facebook. We give it a go maybe on a blog or two, but it is not. Uh, the Kundalini itself brings people to these to this information. It is not uh, uh, something that uh, that is monetarily represented so much. Now, with the seminars, of course, we try to bring that to, to a greater a greater level of uh, of, of, uh, of public uh, understanding and recognition, but but the uh, the block talk, you know, the block talk is very very precious stuff because you know that cone on top of my head is bringing through this information, and if your cat likes it, then you can you can bet it's it, it, it's good for you. <laughs> 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 More questions, Amelia? Yes. Um, Kundalini is within every human person, so available for activation in everyone. Is it a matter of knowing the correct method, and then the Kundalini can be awakened by every person? True enough. True enough. You know, we don't teach it in the schools like we do mathematics. You know, we don't teach it in the schools like we do the different languages. If we did, this world would be tremendously more enlightened than it currently is. But it doesn't take out the fact of karma. You know, it doesn't just because you have kundalini at the base of your spine doesn't mean that you get to short circuit your karmic debt or the karmic requirements that you, you need to balance in this life. So maybe you won't know about it. Maybe maybe it won't be brought into your understandings yet. But everybody has the Kundalini. And so because you have it, you know, it is possible for you to activate it. But the one thing that people really need to remember is that the Kundalini is a conscious, self-aware force of its own. It doesn't need your brain. It doesn't need your heart. It doesn't need anything that you have to ask or to work or to strive for. It knows your karma. So it will allow you, it within you will allow you the knowledge of its presence within you if it deems that is appropriate. Kundalini is in charge of its awakening or activation within you, not you. But if it has allowed you to know of it, 
if it has allowed you to listen to these broadcasts that John and Amelia have so graciously given into the public vectors and sectors, um, if it has allowed you this far, then yes, yes, I would suggest it will allow you much, much farther as well. Another question? Um, yes. Does tea stimulate the adrenals in the same way as coffee? Is it on a par with coffee with regard to caffeine? Which is it? What, what is it? Is tea the same as coffee, basically? Uh, you oh, know, tea, on, a, tea. on a caffeine. If it, yeah. If it, yeah. If Does it's it black tea, enough? if it's black tea, it has more caffeine than coffee does. So absolutely give up black tea. Give up black tea, give up green tea, give up white tea. They're all caffeinated, with the least one being the green tea, but they are all caffeinated. And I tell you what, for those that are already kundalini awakened, you give up the green tea too. You know, drink uh, lemon zinger. <laughs> Not to quote a brand, but you can drink ginseng, uh, red panax ginseng, or, or uh, Siberian ginseng, American ginseng, uh, Don Kwai ginseng for the ladies. Okay? You can drink those products. You can drink hot water with a lemon. You know, for the most of my kundalini awakening, those eight years that I was taken off of caffeine, it was hot water with a lemon. And you know what? That is a very, I still drink that. I like that drink. Make sure it's an organic lemon and make sure the, as best you can that the water isn't fluoridated or in other, other ways, you know, uh, containing toxicity such as chlorine or benzene or whatever else they like to put in because they think they know anything. Okay. Make sure it's pure water with your with your organic lemon. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Talk, take all the, the black caffeinated teas out of your system. This includes white tea, uh, all the different levels of black tea, which includes raspberry tea. You know, raspberry tea is, unless they're using raspberry leaf, Raspberry tea is just a component of black tea with raspberry flavoring, okay? Uh, uh, you know, lemon tea, you know, if they just put a hint of lemon on top of black tea, well, then they call that lemon tea. Okay, you get rid of all the black teas, and you also get rid of the uh, some of the Chinese teas, like, um, oh, what's that one called? Uh, J Jasmine tea is full of caffeine. Okay, uh, and, and most of the Chinese teas are full of caffeine. Uh, and once again, caffeine has has and, and and one person is saying traditionally it's good to avoid ginseng in the summertime as it can be overly stimulating for that time of year. Once again, dipping into traditional Chinese medicine uh, didn't have. Myself, I did not have the benefit of TCM uh, when I was doing I just took it all the time. didn't seem to bother me one, one bit at all. Um, but, yeah, ginger is another hot herb, ginseng a hot herb. You know, these hot herbs do, do exist. And, and according to TCM or traditional Chinese medicine, you know, they, they have certain times of year that they like you to do things. Just, you know, I mean, so if you're, if you're an, uh, a proponent of that, then go for it. Go for it. Uh, uh, there are certain, you know, the, I, I like a lot of what the, the, the TCM says, certainly about times of the year to, to, for, you know, to lose your fluid if, if, if a man is going to do that or a woman is going to do that. At certain times of the year to, to, to take this or take that. Um, as long as the Kundalini in myself is okay with it, then I think it's fine. But there are also some areas of TCM that are inappropriate for kundalini people because, once again, most, the, the, by far, the, 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 the greatest percentage of TCM people are not kundalini awakened, nor are they aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, as, as, as far as uh, the teas go, the black teas are out the Jasmine tea, which I understand is blessedly tasty, is out. Uh, the oolong tea is out. Uh, these types of teas are, you know, good. Uh, 
try to stay away from any and all caffeine sources, even if it's in dark chocolate or white chocolate. Or Look at your medicines. Often they'll use 200 milligrams of caffeine in a, in a cough syrup just to give an extra boost to that cough syrup. And so once again, you know, you stay away from that cough syrup if you can at all do so. So, so yeah, there we have it for that, uh, Amelia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Cousin. Um, so what does enlightenment as a fact mean? Enlightenment is, is you know, and I just wrote this. I just wrote this. And I'll go ahead and just read what I wrote here. Um, Funny, I should be asked this here. Within a kundalini context, enlightenment means being lighted from the inside out with the light of the awakened divine kundalini. This gives the person paranormal levels of wisdom, love, understanding, health, strength, integrity, trust, and many other attributes such as different siddhic skills. At the same time, it connects one into a level of divine merging. To describe this merging is unspeakable, as there are no words that aptly or appropriately describes this. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Mushrooms. <laughs> Steve's asking about chaga mushroom tea. Hey, as long as it doesn't have caffeine in it, Steve, you go for it. You have that much from tea, yikes. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> for those of okay. you that like mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next question, Chris, is, is the final step of awakening to reach the divine mind and stay with it forever and with unconditional love in the heart? Uh, the there is no final step in awakening um, as you have a human body. There, there is no final step. Is no, you're never finished. There is no finished moment. It's a continuing process, continuing, 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 continuing. And you don't really get a choice about divine mind. This is not something that the ego goes, well, you know, today I think I'm going to have divine mind. Since he made me give up my oolong tea, then I'm going to go for this divine mind. And you don't really get to have that. And I know that the questioner is not stating it in that context. And, and in all serious, it isn't mm. you having the divine mind. The divine mind is having you. That's how it works. And if the divine mind has you, then of course, it is communicating with you through your crown chakra, and that crown chakra is directly connected to your heart chakra, and that heart chakra is going to be full of divine love from the divine merging that the person is experiencing. Okay, you just need to take it out of the of the. Uh, the personality controlling what is going on. It's not the personality that gets to control this. It is the divine that will control this. You don't get to reach into the divine mind so much as the divine mind is reaching into you. And it will. It doesn't want to stay away from you. It's not, it doesn't want, it do, you know, it doesn't not want to reach into you. Of course it does. That's why we're here. That's why we're evolving. That's why we're even having the kundalini and the chakra system, the whole bit. Divine mind wants to reach into you. And it will. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and I have no further... Bye. No, just listening to you speak there. Yeah. Um, there are no further questions here for me, Chris. And so, you sounds, know, if anybody... Sounds like a courtroom... No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> Does anybody in the chat room have a question they'd like to type in? Or the number is 347-934-0026. And I have no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> Would the defense like to make My lord, I think I'm supposed to say, if I was in an English course, my lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would mean I'd have to wear a wig, and you know that would be another yeah. hair product, wouldn't it? <laughs> indeed, I'd be indeed. called a wig. <laughs> I'm so, not, yeah, so, um, go ahead. Uh huh. No, no, go ahead. Okay. So as we go back into the divine aspects of the golden helmet and of the halo, once again, the halo is a very, very concentrated form of what has caused the auric field to expand so tremendously. Divinity, you need to understand, divinity does not have the parameters of, how do I say it? Divinity does not have the parameters that human beings apply to themselves. Because the divine is far more than human attribute. Okay, it is far more than the the, 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 the constraints and the instructions and the rules that that we surround ourselves with within certain belief systems or all belief systems, okay? Uh, some of the purest belief systems with regards to Kundalini are the shamanic. You know, you get a power animal and you've got three levels of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, dimension to go into and you ask the power animal, which is like asking the Kundalini to give that person or healing or to take that entity out of a healing or out of that person or to, you know, to do, you, you ask divinity to work with you rather than, than, uh, you know, trying to do all the work yourself, waving your hand over somebody or doing Reiki or whatever. And so, so, you know, within these, these structures of belief systems, uh, and, and certainly the major ones, the eight limbs, well, I like the eight limbs of Buddhism. I do. I think they're great. And I think they're excellent refinement tools, as are the Ten Commandments. Okay. As are, uh, you know, some of the many rules that Islam has with regards to how they treat each other, the, the, the person around you. You know, as are, you know, there are, there are positive uh, in all the major religions, it's just that divinity doesn't necessarily conform to the restrictions and the parameters of expression that those belief systems say they do. Most of these people are not Kundalini awakened. They have no idea of where that road leads. And so they can basically preach from the foundations of a book, of a list of sutras, of a list of commandments, of a list of this or that. And with the Kundalini, the Kundalini is the end point of religion. It's a hard thing for people that are deeply ensconced in their religion to understand. Once you reach Kundalini, then God takes you. And when God takes you, God doesn't necessarily have to have, you know, the, the permission of the Bible or the Quran or, or the Bhagavad Gita. Bible, you know, or, or, or God just kind of said, well, well done, my, my daughter. Well done, my son. Now you come with me. Okay. This is the mm. Kundalini. This is that divine bridge. This is what we are bringing into this population now. This time on Earth, this world, right now. Now I'd like to bring Rosemary on. I think she left. Nope, she's there. Okay, so I'm going to put you into the Shiva Blue, Amelia. And hello, is this Rosemary? Hi. Hello. Yes. Yes, this is Rosemary. <laughs> Chris up. Rosemary, I believe you have some announcements. Well, no, that's not while I push the one to say hello, but uh, <laughs> let me, okay, I'll say that, and then I'll, I'll say what I called about. Um, yes, we do have announcements. We have, by request, of the community in Minneapolis-St. Paul, another seminar, which is scheduled for February 21st and 22nd, and we'll have more information as that gets put together, but also... Uh, Chris M is coming here, for those of you in the area. He is coming December 1st through the 8th, and will be doing talks throughout the cities, as he has um, done earlier, a, f a few weeks ago. 
and it will be Kundalini and the holiday season, living the holiday season. So we're looking forward to that. But, Chris, and why I was calling is what you were saying about religion. Um, it was so clear and, and just a simple way, and now it makes sense to me in that it is religion in its heart is created by our creator in, yes. in wanting to establish a relationship with us, but it's the translation of it and the writing are mostly done by unenlightened people, unrefined, unenlightened, and so that's what we have. Yes, 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 absolutely. And, and, and this is coming from a person who has what kind of spiritual experience do you have, Rosemary? Well, my, my lifetime of being uh, a Catholic Christian and as well being a, as most people know, uh, in this community I was a, a, a sister, a nun for 25 years. I was part of the leadership in the community. What, is, what does that mean, part of the leadership? What does that mean? Well, I was, it, it was in the, where there was a shift taking place and I was. Simpl- simplify it for us. I, think, I believe the term is Mother Superior. No, it was. What we, I wasn't called that anymore. So it was after that when there was. I was younger than, than they, than the women had been in that role before, and and that that when I look back, I'm really touched by that. But it was part of my journey, and um, I, I I've said here and other places too. It took God more energy. God doesn't work that like that, but it took more work from my viewpoint of God to get me out into moving on and coming even to where I am now than it took for God to pick me up and put me in there. And <laughs> well. it was it, a, a part of me searching and I guess not trusting. It, it was I, I believe I believe I believe the, the the soil was made fertile by that yes. journey. And, and and once that seed was planted in fertile soil, as as uh, some aspect of the Bible says, well, the the, the fruit that has been mm-hmm. blooming and, and ripening, which is the fruit of rosemary, is is a thousand times more than it would have been otherwise. Yes, and and it was the, letting the go. Of the, the parable of the mustard seed, right? Yes. 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 And it's interesting because all those those parables and the stories, and I'm sure in all religions, as they're written, are really touching. They, at the deeper level, they reach in and touch our hearts. And I guess at what you were saying somewhere this evening about how Kundalini is always leading us and kind of gently calling us, bringing yes, us yes. along. Yes, it precisely. Is and it's, you know it's. You know, as, 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 I, as I fly out to the Twin Cities and I give these talks, well, what do you think is bringing people in there? I mean, we'll do some advertising, but, you know, you know, there's like a million people that live in the Twin Cities, right, or something like that? Oh, yeah, I, more than quite a few. Yeah. And so sorry, the Kundalini, will, Kundalini will reach out into those populations and pull those who it wants to hear these talks. It will pull those to this information. As I've said at some of these talks, you know, I, I've been putting on seminars since 2006 um, uh, with the assistance of Francine at the beginning, and uh, people would be dreaming of advertisements that we hadn't even put in magazines yet. You know, the Kundalini will begin to call people to this to this information, and and uh, it's just a, it's just a real blessing to be able to to come out to Minnesota and and the Twin Cities there, meet people like Julia, meet people like you and Mark and and all the other really, really grace-based people that I've met, Trina, Andrew, Stephen, you know, really, Mm -hmm. really great people, Janice and Gail and all the people that came to the seminar, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful people, Mary and John. Yeah. So, yes, yes, indeed, my dear. Uh, we are we are given we are given what we need to be given in order to provide a fulcrum for understanding our spiritual journey uh, by the divine 
The divine gives us. The divine gave us Christianity. Divine gave us Mormonism. Divine gave us uh, Islam. Divine gave gave us Hinduism. Divine gave us, you know, shamanism. I mean, the divine provides. We just have to reach up and take a bite out of that apple. To use a uh, religious term. <laughs> Anyway, my dear, thank you for asking your question, Rosemary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, folks, if there are no other questions, um, I am going to go ahead and bring this conversation to a close. I would like to go to to my co-host, Amelia Centara. Hello, Amelia. Hi, Wake Carmen. up. Wake up. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Hello, Rick. I suppose just one thing. You know, you said earlier about Kundalini adapting to the religious beliefs that a person has. And just to say, my experience was that Kundalini during, during my awakening, during the spinal sweep and the immediate awakening, Kundalini um, didn't adapt to, you know, my belief system at all. It went straight <laughs> outside of my cultural, you know, and religious That's true. experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, whoa. Yeah, from so Catholicism to Hindu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, way outside visions, words, images, even the yeah, shamanic actually, though, actually, that I had though, no know, it, it, it did, it did adapt. It allowed you to be born into a society that would put you into a strict upbringing of a, of a duality-based belief system of Christianity, Catholic, Catholic Christianity at the time. That, yeah. was the refine, that was the refinement process oh, yeah. for you. You know, and the fact that it that it didn't adopt that that platform of religious uh, exploration at the awakening point simply means that it it determined that it, you needed a a very clear break from that refinement educational tool that Christianity was used for you and opened into another type of a belief system that does encompass the Kundalini awakening, and 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 I think partly that was for the word Kundalini itself to come into mm-hmm. your uh, into your vocabulary, so that you could you could use it as a as a term of reference, and you could actually apply it as terms of reference to the Holy Ghost, or you could begin to build your own bridges between Hinduism and the and the Christianity uh, that you were raised with. Yes, and to actually let go of a lot of the beliefs and dogmas and, and to understand, you know, the expansion of the divine beyond those that I had been aware of up until that point, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it was an incredible experience when I, when I look back on it. And, I mean, I am in no way Hindu now, just to say, but those were, that was the experience that, that I was, it was amazing, well, actually, you know. actually, you, you are Hindu. You're Hindu, well, you're I am, Christian. That. You're Islam, you're Buddhist, <laughs> you're shamanic. I mean, I you know. Think, yeah, this is true. This is true. And that we, is the... That, <laughs> go, go ahead. No, go ahead. That, is the, that is true. That is, that is exactly what Kundalini is. Kundalini is in every one of those religions and in none. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so congratulations. And, and I would like to say... Thank you for everybody who are listening to us live here. The uh, Celestial Rubies, Biavi, Elizabeth, EDG, as I like to call her, Fashi, guests uh, 13, 13, 13, 24, 14, 64, 17, 37, 23, 78, 53, 65, Laura Soaring, MJ Henderson, Madevasad V, Steve Jarecki, Suka, and Mary Lou, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> so thank you, thank you Goodbye. all for listening. And I'd like to say, I'd like to say a little prayer for those who are listening in their sleep. TBC, the Saranam. Okay, and we have six minutes left 
If there's anybody that can ask me a six-minute question, then I'll leave that open for a few seconds here. And I would like to thank everybody who participated in the chat room, especially Fasci, Julia, um, and the, the Laura Soaring, and the different guests, 2206, and, and uh, Steve Jarecki, and Dee Seleski, and um, <clears throat> uh, Julie Celestial Rubies. Um, thank you all. Uh, your presence here is absolutely glorious and beautiful, and it really uh, moves the show along. And, and I'd like to thank everybody who is listening to this program in the archives. Hello to you. And uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> so, thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll talk with you next week. Bye-bye, Amelia. Bye, Chris, and bye, everybody. <laughs>